Today marks my one year Kundalini awakening anniversary. Uh, yeah, a year ago today, February 17th, I had a Kundalini awakening. And this was an amazing transformative experience for me. And so today I just wanted to commemorate that and to share that experience with you. Uh, some of you are just here for the nuts and bolts UFO stuff or for the UFO news, and that's fine. Uh, but if you want to join me, get in here. This is Jack with Cosmic Road. I talk about UFOs and the paranormal. Please hit like, please subscribe and share on social media. And please comment on the story as I'm going through it. Some of you may be asking what a kundalini awakening is. Well, that is one of various sorts of uh, uh, enlightenment modalities. There are many mo modalities for enlightenment. And uh, kundalini awakening is, I believe, the Hindu or, or Sikh uh, form of it or one of them. And it's a very specific form of enlightenment. Uh, some use the word uh, kundalini awakening as more of a broader umbrella term to include some of these other modalities or just general enlightenment experiences or expanded awareness events. All of these events and experiences and modalities are real. That is, you can have an expanded awareness event in a variety of different ways. And I'm not here to tell you, uh, you know, what's, you know, more valid than another. My experience is not any more valid than anyone else's. Uh, uh, but I just want to uh, differentiate between the umbrella term of Kundalini awakening, which uh, many people just, you know, as a general term for enlightenment for many people, in the specific uh, kundalini awakening referred to um, <clears throat> by those uh, people who have developed this, uh, I, is it, what would you call it a belief system or modality, or uh, who, have, who have described this modality and who have mapped it out. I experienced a classic kundalini awakening uh, one year ago today, uh, and um, it was an amazing moment. Um, so let me tell you about it without any more hemming and hawing. Uh, I was not planning to have a Kundalini awakening that day. I wasn't thinking about it. It was the furthest thing from my mind. I had only recently learned about Kundalini awakenings. I had, uh, begun my uh, Reiki class and I was a beginner learning Reiki energy healing. And prior to that, I had had a few metaphysical events. I'd had kind of a series of events leading up to that. And uh, before that, I, I had done ghost hunting and I was still doing ghost hunting at this time. So I don't know what triggered my series of metaphysical events that began happening for me uh, about four years ago or so. <clears throat> and uh, so, but whatever, that's not the case. That's not what this video is about. But so this was... At that time, the latest in the series of metaphysical events, and most certainly the most powerful of them. Um, yeah, it's just incredible. So uh, I was, like I say, I wasn't planning on having a Kundalini awakening that day. Uh, I had learned about it, you know, a few months prior, maybe a year prior, and I, I had heard about it and I had studied it a little bit. I had as an ambition someday to have a Kundalini awakening. I figured, you know, 30, 50 years later, I'll be meditating on a mountain somewhere and, and maybe I'll have this experience. Uh, but instead, it hit me when I was uh, stoned and playing video games. Yeah, that's right. I, I wish I could say I was doing something more uh, enlightenment worthy uh, when this uh, event happened for me. <clears throat> but uh, actually, as you will see, the video game plays an important part in the story. So I'm there stoned and uh, playing video games. I get frustrated with the game, which is an important part of the story. I'll, that'll come in later. And uh, I get up and I go into the study. I sit down in the study, boom, instantly uh, start having uh, the Kundalini awakening. At first, I didn't know what was going on. I felt pulses going up my spine, up, and up, 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 yeah, up, I don't know if it was going up and down, but it was certainly going up my spine, and uh, I, uh, this was crazy, I had never felt anything like that before, that was really weird, and then I started kind of jerking and twitching, and having little seizures, and, uh, you know, the, in, it went on, and uh, this uh, energy began to build, and, and this overtake me, 
And um, before long, I wasn't capable of rational thought or moving or anything. I have a, a chair to either side of me. The chair I'm, I was sitting in at the time, a different chair than it is that I'm sitting in today, it was uh, groaning and creaking. It really needed some WD-40, and I had been regularly regularly putting some WD-40 on it, but it was groaning and creaking. When I began to jerk and shake and have these seizures, the chair began to jerk and shake a lot. I realized when the pulses started going up my spine and I, I began to have these seizures, uh, and this energy was building, that I was probably having a kundalini awakening, which, again, I had read about and studied a little bit about and so i was able to recognize the signs of that if i had not recognized the signs of that i probably would have gone to the emergency room i probably would have thought i was having a seizure and some sort of medical emergency but as it was i recognized what was happening and my wife was home and um i was so afraid she was going to hear the creaking of the chair and come in to see what was going on uh and that was going to disturb my kundalini awakening and uh so I was not capable of even thinking uh, about switching chairs. Like I say, I've got another chair for the cats to either side of me. Um, I was not capable of forming the thought of getting up to go to one of those chairs that wouldn't creak and groan um, and thus not, you know, attract my wife and bring her in here and, and disturb what was going on. Um, and uh, yeah, and wasn't capable of forming the thought, was not capable of forming the action. I was basically paralyzed um, for about three hours. Uh, the whole event was about five hours. And uh, so, uh, yeah, so I was somewhere else. I mean, I was, I was uh, in the light. I was in the light for five hours. It was freaking amazing, guys. It was, I can't tell you how amazing it was. Um, it was... Um, uh, yeah, it was ecstasy. It was, uh, you know, my, my Reiki instructor uh, has had six Kundalini awakenings and um, one of them lasted for 12 hours. I, I don't, I don't even know how you could function. I don't know how you would, how, what, would that, what would that even be like? It's nuts. Um, but uh, yeah, so for me, it went on for five hours. Uh, oh, and she calls it a cosmic orgasm. And that's, that's totally what it was. It was, it was a cosmic orgasm. It was not erotic. Um, there was nothing sexy about it, but it was orgasmic. And, um, which I know that seems like a oxymoron, a non erotic orgasm, <clears throat> uh, but it was, um, and, uh, but it was even more than that. It was transcendent. Um, it was, it was insane. And, uh, and I was like half in my body. I don't think I was ever not aware of my body, but I was also kind of somewhere else. Uh, I was in the light and, um, you know, a lot of people who have Kundalini awakenings will have this event where they, uh, know everything and, you know, they have this big enlightenment moment and, uh, typically afterwards they will forget it or they will forget parts of it. If that ever happened for me, I don't remember it at all. I don't think it happened, but I can't say for sure. Um, but I was in the light for five hours. After three hours, I was able to get up and go to the bathroom and get a drink. And then I came right back. You know what? I said hello to my wife so she knew I was alive. And, uh, and uh, then I came right back and it began again. And it went on for another two hours. And uh, it, it may, I may have been able to continue it for longer, but it was like one o'clock at night at that time and I was ready to go to bed. I, I took a Benadryl to knock myself out. Uh, you know, maybe you shouldn't take drugs. You shouldn't mix drugs and uh, uh, enlightenment modalities. I don't know. But uh, uh, yeah, uh, so following that event, yeah, it, uh, I was just, for, the, for a week after that, I barely needed to sleep. I was filled with energy. It felt so great. Uh, I, I would take like two, two hour naps a day uh, without sleeping a night. And that's all I needed. And, uh, you know, it'd be 4 a.m. and I'd be dancing in the kitchen. Uh, you know, it was just, it was awesome. I felt so good. I had so much energy. It was, it was amazing. And um, yeah, I, I just, I loved it. And eventually it faded. 
but I think that some of the good effects, I think that it probably gave me an upgrade of some sort or, you know, uh, probably needed an upgrade. Uh, <laughs> I was an atheist all my life and probably had some, you know, blockages or whatever. Who knows? It helped me get rid of some of that. Um, some people that have had a Kundalini awakening say that now their third eye is open. My Reiki instructor has told me that my that, that if the uh, the chakra of the third eye goes front and back, my front is open, but my back is still blocked. I actually recently had somebody, a different energy worker, work on the back uh, to try to unblock whatever was back there. And he said he did. And uh, uh, for a week after that, I had some effects from that. Uh, I couldn't sleep, but not in a good way. Uh, and, uh, my, my intestines are all messed up. You know, it's probably TMI, but it just shows that he did something powerful, um, that had a physical effect that lasted about a week. Uh, it wasn't real pleasant. Uh, so, uh, but it did happen. And, um, afterwards, I don't think I noticed anything specifically different. So, uh, yeah, I didn't start seeing ghosts or spirits, but who knows? Maybe, maybe it did something. Uh, anyway, so but that was my Kundalini awakening. It was just this amazing, amazing event. Um, you know, this enlightenment modality. Afterwards, I wanted, I was researching it, trying to figure out really what had happened to me and, and what, what it was that I had experienced. And I came across a yogi saying that it was his belief uh, that drugs could spontaneously trigger a Kundalini awakening. Uh, and this really bothered me, uh, because I was stoned when it happened and, uh, I really didn't want it, this to have been an accident. Uh, you know, I wanted this to mean something, you know, so that really bothered me. And that's when the video game that I was playing comes into the story. I was playing the game Doom. I think this was the 2016 version of Doom. I don't know if you've ever played this game, but you're a Marine or whatever, Space Marine, fighting demons on Mars. Eventually, at a certain point in the game, you follow the demons to hell. And a good portion of the game is, uh, is, is fighting demons in hell. Well, I uh, uh, you know was going through level after level, clearing the levels, killing all the bad guys in the various levels. And, you know, after about five levels of, of killing bad guys in hell, uh, I uh, killed everybody and I couldn't get to the next level. I was stoned and I couldn't figure out how to get to the next level. And I kept on accidentally uh, going back to the beginning of, of hell. And um, uh, I, I didn't recognize it because I was so stoned and it had been, you know, four or five levels previously because it would take me right back to the very beginning where you enter hell. And, um, so being stoned and, and not knowing what was going on, I was wandering through this desolate, empty hellscape for hours, uh, trying to figure a way out of hell. There were no bad guys to fight, uh, cause I had already killed them and I was just wandering around hell lost in hell for hours. Uh, before becoming so disturbed that I abandoned the game, quit the game, got up and went to the study and sat down and boom, perhaps because my tailbone hitting the chair, you know, to give it some sort of physio physiological cause, um, uh, you know, maybe that's what triggered it in a, in a physical sense. Um, cause that's where the Kundalini energy is supposed to be stored at the base of your spine. But so within one minute of me being lost in hell, I was having a spiritual awakening. And when I was relating the story to a friend afterward, he said this was a confirming metaphor. And bang, I mean, that was, that was a great way to say that. That was just perfect. It was a confirming metaphor. So this event was arranged for me by spirit guides, by somebody uh, who gave me that to validate it um, and, um, you know, maybe even to give it a shape or meaning, you know, lost in hell and then you're, you're awakened. Um, so, um, you know, uh, so anyway, so I was really, really grateful for that. 
that really helped me a lot, that it wasn't an accident, that I didn't just trigger because I was doing drugs. I don't think it would have happened if I had not been stoned, honestly. I think that, that probably opened me up uh, to something, uh, to forces, to, what, to whatever uh, this was. So I, I do think that, uh, although I'm not advocating drug use, uh, especially not for spiritual matters, um, but yeah, anyway, so that is, uh, the story of my Kundalini awakening guys. That was one year ago today, uh, an amazing event that really changed me. And, you know, there's no going back from that. Once you've had one of these events, uh, there's, you know, uh, cause I had been an atheist all my life until maybe a couple of years or so, uh, before this event, when I started to have these experiences, um, and, um, uh, but, well, I don't want to say they were smaller than this because there's some pretty cool stuff like being visited by loved ones uh, that had been departed and um, uh, uh, some some really cool things that happened. But this was very physical and very um, uh, just, just you know, there, there's there's no way, well, there's no way to describe it, but there's also no way to go back from that. Once you've had one of these, you're going forward, you're going to continue your spiritual evolution and your quest. You're going to be on a road or further on your road. And uh, so that's how it was for me. And uh, I, I thank you, spirit guides, uh, Reiki guides, whoever, you know, loved ones, whoever it was that helped me with this uh, event and, and organized this for me and allowed me to have it because I don't take any credit for this. Uh, it wasn't because I was so special or that I had I had achieved enlightenment in some way. Uh, um, it just, um, you know, it was an aspiration, a, a vague aspiration of mine to have this event someday, probably far in the future. But it wasn't something I was thinking about at the time. I just wanted to play video games and smoke weed. And uh, instead, I got something much cooler. Uh, so anyway, uh, that was a year ago today. So, uh, I think that this is an important topic in the sense that more people need to be able to talk about this because there's a lot of people that have had these expanded awareness events of whatever, whatever modality it was. And, um, uh, I, I think people need to be more comfortable talking about this. The same with you know, uh, remote viewing and psychic abilities, uh, energy healing, all, all these various uh, abilities that we have in our connection to spirit and ourselves. I think uh, that's an important to talk about and to get out there. Uh, so um, anyway, uh, thank you very much. If you've listened to this whole thing, I really appreciate it. Uh, give me a big thumbs up. I uh, really appreciate that. Please hit subscribe if you haven't already in the bell next to it. Please share this video on social media and please consider joining me on Facebook and Twitter. Links below. Comment below. Let me know what you think about all this craziness. And until next time, this is Jack with Cosmic Road signing out.